in game number three. Both these players 3-0. and oh. For Ali, he's got Nurse's Mind. I'm not sure what the play was that turn. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. Do apologize for the glare there. Looks like a chromatic sphere. For Steve. And, and these decks, a lot of times, they'll just be like two, two ships passing in the night. Pretty much. You know, they're, they're each kind of doing their own thing. They don't have a lot to attack what the other person is doing. So I've, I've played Living End quite a bit. I actually used to play this matchup quite a lot. Um, for Living End, it is so important for them to find Fulminator Mage in this matchup for pretty obvious reasons, and they can just keep doing it a bunch. Sure. Uh, Jungle Weaver is what Steve is sacrificing right now. I think we're going to see him use Ingot Chewer as well. And a yeah, I, guess, I guess the question is, does Steve play a land yet this turn? Apparently Steve's only allowed to play one land a turn. Mm, that's really unfortunate. That stupid rule the game has. Seriously. <laughs> Versus mine. Going to use that to sacrifice Chromatic Sphere. Urza's Mine was the draw there for Antrazi, so he doesn't need a second one of those. He needs the other pieces. Looks like he's going to deploy a mine, play a Relic, activate that. Now, Relic, obviously a very good card Oh yeah. against this deck, but it, it's, it, it's surprisingly resilient against Graveyard removal like Relic because of a card like Ingot Shewer. So what Steve can do here is he can use the Ingot Shewer, yep. evoke it, and then stack it in yep. his favor. As long as he puts these in the right order, the, the Chewer will destroy the artifact before it ends up in the graveyard. Correct. So that's what he's going to do. So there's your Invoke on the Ingot Chewer. Relic will be taken care of. And now Ingot Chewer goes to the graveyard. And now it looks like Steve might be cycling a Deadshot Minotaur. But he'll start by playing a Bloodstained Mire and just simply pass the turn back over to Antrazi. Antrazi will take a draw step here. Grove of the Burn Will is the draw. Here's a Chromatic Sphere. He'll sacrifice that. Take a draw. Urza's Power Plant is what he's found. A little closer. Yep. One piece away now. And now there's a Chromatic... Oh, excuse me. There's a Sylvan Scrying. That'll search for the tower. Tron online starting next turn. That'll do it. So we'll see if he has any of the big payoff spells in his hand. It's weird because this, this this matchup is basically two combo decks, as you mentioned, kind of two ships passing light, but there is some kind of weird interactions and jockeying for position that are involved with Relic, when to cast Living End, stuff like that. Yep. Yo, you can't make any sloppy mistakes. Steve, gonna uh, he's going to cycle, excuse me, a Deadshot Minotaur. Now he's cycling a Street Wraith. He'll have to pay two life to do that. Twisted Abomination the draw here. And it's also possible Steve won't want everything in his graveyard to come back. Yep. Yeah, it, it, which is weird. But true. Well, if the big planeswalker comes down on the other side, yep. removes them all from the game, you got to have a backup plan. Yeah, if Ugin comes down and wipes everything, that's a huge issue. I'm going to search for a land with the Bloodstained Mire. Steve going to go with an Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, in this matchup, it's not about living ending as fast as possible. Now, one of the nice things about living in is because you have so much cycling and card drawing mm -hmm. built in your deck, it, your ability to find Fulminator Mage and Avalanche Riders if he's playing it this weekend is pretty high. He also has four copies of Beast within, too. So he can really mess with the lands. I like it when you see this deck just start casting its bad creatures. Oh, that's the fun part. When you have to go into hard mode. Oh, yeah. Get a little, get a little I, like, I like to call it getting grimy. Yep. Get, get your hands dirty in there. <laughs> that is a Verdant Catacombs. Ruben is going to pass the turn back. Beast within is going to take care of the Earth's power plant. All right, and he did it on the upkeep so that the creature would have summoning sickness. Save him a turn of three points of damage. And there's a Beast token. Antrazi will draw. Picked up another copy of Urza's tower. Towers and land for the turn. There it is. Yeah. Watery grave the land. Todd Anderson the beast. <laughs> Todd Anderson's probably going to die in a second. But, you know, that is what it is. It happens. That's just, yeah, it's just going to happen sometimes. Steve, he'll untap those four lands. Take a draw here. Copper Line Gorge is what he's picked up. 
Doesn't have a way to mess with the mana anymore, it appears. But on the flip side, it looks like Ollie does not have a whole lot going on there in his hand. Oh, the trick, of course. Because you're right. He doesn't have a lot going on in his hand. He doesn't have the other Tron piece. But when you're playing against Tron, you don't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So all Steve sees right now is he sees two mines in a tower, and he's thinking, well, you're a Tron piece away from doing something completely busted. Yeah. Uh, how am I supposed to move forward? He's going to start by playing a mountain. Twisted Abomination, Violent Outburst, Ingot, Chewer, Copper Line Gorge. That's the hand here for Steve Rubin. So he can get, you know, one or two more creatures into his graveyard and then put them all into play if he wants to. Yep. Montrasi drew a copy of Relic Progenis. That's a good one to draw right now. I think Steve might have a response if that gets <laughs> cast. Just, that's just my best guess. There's Grove of the Burn Willows. Well, he might just pass the turn back. Antrasi's going to start by attacking for three. Ruben will fall down to 13. Get some. <laughs> I, I, that token's not going to be around for long, so might as well do something. Yeah, yeah he got his. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the Relic. Wow, no response. I guess he doesn't have much of a reason to respond because he can just chew. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's always nice when you have everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> Relic Virginia with a full graveyard? Yeah, that's fine. Copperline Gorge might be the land here. Nope. Yep. All right, here's Chewer. Oh, Hardcast Chewer. Wow, this is this is not what I expected I at all. I did not expect this at all either. All right, there goes that. A Relic Activation takes care of a land. And Antrazi not activating the Relic. Now, now I'm completely baffled. I'm not sure what to say about that. Yeah, now I'm, I'm completely blown away. I feel like, I, I almost feel like I'm missing something. Steve will untap, take a draw here. What would the rationale be behind not activating Relic there? Is there a reason Ollie would want his graveyard to stay around? Okay, if he has a card like Warm Coil Engine in his graveyard or Ulamog or something like that, then he would want his graveyard to be intact. That would make the most sense. Because keep in mind, the other Relic that got blown up, he didn't activate that one either. So that would make, that, that would be the most, that would make the most sense. The most logical reason why he's not activating his Relics. And get sure is gonna come across. Twisted Abomination. A little Swamp Cycling. Yeah, that Swamp. Limited All-Star right there. Very good card. Twisted A-Bomb. Original set. Oh, yeah. I'm asking. I, I'm not going to remember the, the names of the sets mm, of these all cards. Right, all right. Scourge is the answer. Scourge, of course. Come on. Man. I enjoy, I enjoy some card knowledge. Sure. It's one of my weakest areas. Yeah, I couldn't tell you my blood type, but <laughs> you know what? What set monstrous carry a bit is from? Yeah, or carry a Yeah, I know that. Sure, it's easy. Why not? I'm not going to tell you. Your, your parents must be very proud. <laughs> <laughs> you leave my mom and dad out of this. <laughs> They're happy with my life decisions mostly because they have no choice what my life decisions are. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here comes an attack for three. Light totals are 17 to 11. Th this is not playing out at all how I would have thought. No, me either. Th uh, this honestly leads me to believe that there's something in Ali's graveyard. Like, we, we clearly don't have a great look at the graveyard right now, but that's like the only logical answer that I have to this puzzle. Land number six here for Ali does not have Tron. Now, here's Warm Coil Engine. This might get a response. 
it's also possible that like Steve doesn't have Living End in his deck anymore, because sometimes this deck sideboards out that card, and then they just cascade into something else. In his sideboard, he has eh, nothing that. Okay, he's not on that plan. Sometimes you see like one Yixa Jailer or something like that, but he's not on that plan. Now, once Worm Coil comes in, one, if Living End gets cast, like Worm Coil will leave, but he'll get Ali will get two worms from it. Okay, that that's how that happens. It does leave behind two bodies. Yeah, as opposed to. Like there are some cards, like the way that the way that the way that Living End reads, it's kind of funny. Like you know, when the opponent has Graph Trigger's Cage mm -hmm. in play, Living End still works perfectly fine. Okay. What some people didn't know, like when that was a thing a couple of years ago, so some cards interact in a weird way with Living End. So, I, I imagine that's actually, yeah, I imagine that's actually what they're asking. You see, a judge is here right now. They might just be asking, how does this interact? So I'll get their answer to that question here in just a moment. Sure. But this is a this this is a weird looking game. Yeah, we're gonna come back to the booth here really quickly. This is a really strange looking game here between Steve Rubin and Ali Antrazi, two very accomplished players here on the SCG tour. So as they uh, as they figure out what that ruling is, we'll be able to let you guys know what it is. But in the meantime, Cedric Phillips, Craig Kremples here in the booth. We saw a little bit earlier in this round, Jacob Baugh with his awesome mono black Eldrazi deck. It, it had quite the showing. Now you you said you don't like big mana strategy, so you'd never play that deck, right? To me, that that deck can be so low to the ground. Okay. That it is intriguing to me. I'm, I'm. It's kind of grandiose. It feels like a better Tron deck. Do you think that's accurate? It's tough to say. You, you do get access to some discard spells. Um, the black spot removal is very good. Okay. You know, so so maybe it is. Yeah, it's like, like they're both kind of doing the same thing, which is big mana strategy. But you know, they both have Ulamog in their deck, and we just watched Jacob cast Ulamog on turn five. Sure, but you'll never have Karn on turn three with it. That's true, and you won't have Wormcoil Engine. I. I'm envisioning that your matchup against, like, Tron has a very bad matchup against Burn. I think that Mono Black deck probably has a bad matchup against Burn, too. At least what it, it felt like they didn't bring very many tools to the table, especially game one. Maybe. I, I guess it depends just how far behind it is on turn three. Yeah. You know, be, because if you Blight Herder bringing some tokens into play, and you're not that at, at that low of a life total, you're probably in okay shape. Yeah, you might be okay. All right, judge ruling's taken care of. If we can figure out what, exactly what that judge ruling was, we'll of course let you guys know at home, but play does continue here between Antrazi and Ruben. Ruben with just a Blackleaf Cliss and passing the turn back. He's being very patient here. In a, yeah, they were discussing the interaction between Wormcoin and Living End, which doesn't come as much of a surprise to me. They're both. Yeah, they're just both playing in such an obscure way that I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, you know, like the no activation of relic both times from Ali. It just leads me to believe that something strange is going on. And get Chewer is going to block here. Three damage going to come across. It also feels like Steve's trying to kill him in one turn. Yes. And there's a chromatic star. Antrazi will sacrifice this. You see his life total is up to 23 now from the lifelink. Draw card. A chromatic sphere is the draw. <laughs> I love a good redraw. Let's do it again. Yeah. So he's going to use the mine. Sacrifice this. Draw a card. Mana floating. Didn't get a great look at the draw there. Actually, I think it was a power plant. So the double ingot chewer in the graveyard will come back and eat both worm coil token ends? That's is what, that right? That's what should happen. It's just strange, right? Because it felt like Steve has been able to make a move multiple times to violent outburst and he's refusing to. Yes. Uh, I I have no reason to believe that he doesn't have living in his deck. I have to imagine it's still there. And he's, he's at five facing lethal next turn, so we're going to find out one way or the other, right? Sure. <laughs> well, he's running out of time here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we don't, he dies. So we find out one way or the other. Taking the, the way that he's organized his graveyard makes it seem like everything's coming back. So does he, does he have the ability to attack for 23? All right. He's just going to pass the turn back, draw a card. He's not happy with the size of his graveyard.
Cycle Jungle Weaver. That's a big boy. Draw a card. I also feel like the other thing that he's doing right now is he's... So I think another reason that he hasn't made a move yet is he's trying to maximize his chances of Fulminator Mage. Okay. So that he can maybe just chump block Worm Coil Engine, blow up a land, get Fulminator Mage back with the Living End and kind of cut the outset on Trussie has. That's one of the other things he's trying to do here. Piv's the needle to draw here for Ali. Trying to get yourself trying to get yourself in someone else's head is pretty tough sometimes. So what do you think he has the pithing needle in his deck for? Mostly Fulminator. Okay. I, I would be shocked if it's anything else. Sure. It, it's just the one target, but it's so good against the deck. Here's Violent Outbursts. We get a Cascade Trigger. Well, we know. Yep. Top card of the deck. Right there for yeah. him. All right. So here's Living End. All right. And those Ingot Chewers might not get anything. Oh, yeah, because you get a trigger. Yeah, they, 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 they would triggers need to, on the stack. Yep. They would need to choose the... Oh, and, and there's that's, the Ulamog. Okay, that's what happened. I think he just discard on turn one. I guess so. Okay. This makes more sense now. I wouldn't have cast Living End either. <laughs> it, it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Yep. All right. Now, Trazi, because he just plays Power Plants, so now he's tapping for a bunch of mana. And now he's activating I right now. So what's he searching up? Possibly just another worm coil. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Get something on the board now. And so Ollie's taking a very creative route this game. Because what what this meant is he he went turn one discard go. Because you saw where Steve tried to play like another land sure. early in the game, and it's like, no, I did this on my first turn. I discard Ulamog, I said go. So that's why that first opening stage of the game looked a little bit weird, too. So now we find out, can he beat an Ulamog that's on the battlefield? I see the life totals here 23 to 5. Steve will draw a card, picked another copy of Violent Outburst. I, yeah, he has one monstrous carry bid, which has to attack. Has no choice. <laughs> so <laughs> that thing, that's what it does. Couple, couple different things for Ali to block with. The block with the death touch creature. Actually, a block with the lifelink creature. It looks like go up to twenty six. Okay. Black Leaf Plus pass the turn back. Montrazi will draw. Picked up a copy of Ghost Quarter. I'm going to do an Ember Cool check now. I don't think he's playing one this weekend. I guess Ulamog can just do this. Because it exiles 20 cards. Yeah. Can't be killed. Why do I think Steve's on a no-outer? Well, he, it looked like he drew another Violent Outburst, so he's wondering if he wants to Living End now or let Ulamog do its thing and possibly have zero targets for the Living End. And there goes 20 cards. I don't think he turned over a Living End in those cards. Keep in mind, these cards are exiled, not put in the graveyard. Yep. Which matters a lot. I think we might see some blocking here from Steve. I think we're going to see blocking in such a fashion that it kills as many of his creatures as possible. Well, Ollie gets to choose. Wait, but he's still, yeah, so, but he's still got to, like, he still has to spread the damage accordingly, right? No, he can, he can pile it all onto one creature if he oh, wants to. Okay, that's true. That's true. Yep. And, and that's, that's what he's, he's going to do. do. Okay. So Steve tried to work him into a mistake there yep. by spreading out the damage. Just kind of play dumb a little bit. Like, yep. oh, hey, I'm trying to kill this. <laughs> yeah. You yep. know, oh, it's indestructible. Well, you get all of my guys. Yeah. Yep. No, no, no. No, just, just your Ingot Chewer's dead. Here's another Warm Coil Engine. And, 
and I, I can't imagine, it, it, you know, if Ali gets another turn to attack removing 20 cards, I can't imagine that's not enough to win the game. Yeah, at, at this stage, it feels like, to me, like, Ali is not going to get to go to his attack step. Like, he'll announce attackers. That's what, assuming Steve doesn't draw living in this turn. That's, uh, I think that's what we'll see Steve do. But again, I'm, even if that happens, right, he's got an ink and chewer in the graveyard. That's it. Yep. So, Steve is going to draw. He'd have to chain together a lot of cyclers for this to work out in his favor. Pith and Needle did come down. You guys saw that at home. That name Fulminator made. It's not much of a surprise there. I mean, Ali seems like he's in such good shape. The yeah, and yeah. Steve's going to concede. The, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's any way. I don't think there's any way out for Steve. No, I think that's the issue here. And in a weird roundabout way, we saw Ali discard Ulamog on turn one, and Steve could never overcome that. And I think the way that he's supposed to overcome that is to mess with Ali's lands, never cast Living In, which is why we saw him never casting Living In sure. during the entire game, and then probably hard cast his threats. But he never found Fulminator Mage, he never found any way to actually enact that game plan. As a result, Ali Antrasi wins this match two games to one over Steve Rugo.